Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Irvin, also known as Kobuman. Welcome to the continuation of Microsoft Windows Server. In the previous video, we talked about Active Directory users and computers. I hope you liked that video, and I do see that a lot of people did. So that is awesome. In the second part, as promised, we're going to talk about DHCP, Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. As usual, I always talk about things in the sense where this is how it would look like if you were to get hired to work for a company. So this is a practical knowledge that means that you can sit down at the server or a computer and start to do and start to work on these things. It's very easy to understand and I'm going to make sure that it is easy to understand. All right, let's get into it. But before we do that, please do me a favor and in the comment below just say hello hi or present or if you can like the video or subscribe that would also be great thank you so much so let's get into it so here's our server windows server 2019 we're going to log into dhcp and make sure that we are running under administrator so you can do this with the tools that we've installed previously on our windows 10 machine as well so if you recall if i go to my windows 10 machine here and if i click the start menu we can see that i've installed admin tools as well and here they are windows administrative tools so you can access dhcp remotely so dhcp server can be accessed remotely from any Windows computer. So we can do it like that, or we can simply go directly to the server itself and see and access the exact same tools. So we're just gonna go ahead and do that. It doesn't matter, we're going to do it from here. We're gonna open up DHCP. So we're going to just maximize this and we're going to expand here where it says server new domain. This is basically our DHCP server and underneath it are what they're called scopes. And we got two different scopes, which is IP version four and IP version six. So let me just expand this and explain to you what a scope is. In a nutshell, a scope is basically the IP address range that you're going to use for your DHCP server. So in, in the nutshell, if I was to, for example, right click IP version four and I select new scope here, we can set up a new version of IP range. So let me just call it new IP range. Okay, I'm gonna call it new IP range. And here it is, we're gonna start, we have a starting IP address. So we can say 192.168.1. Zero. We can start with that and then we can end the IP range with, for example, 192.168.1. For example, 100. So you'd be able to assign IP addresses between these two ranges, between zero and a 100. So between one and 100, actually. <laughs> so and then you can just leave it like that and create a new scope. I'm going to cancel out of this because I've already created a new scope. Right. So the reason it's called new scope is because, you know, when you look through a scope, for example, like a, you know, looking glass, right? You're looking, looking glass, whatever is inside of that looking glass, like a circle, that's what in this case scope means. So whatever is inside of that, in this case, it's the IP range. So if we look at the address pools here, for an example, we can see that here is our starting IP address and this is our ending IP address. So this one is from one to a hundred. It says here address range for distribution. So these are the IP addresses and AKA IP range that's available for us for this specific scope. And you can have multiple versions of different scopes. So you can keep expanding on this. If you, this is used to organize an organization. So let's say you have a certain part of your enterprise that wants to be under this IP range, then you would create a new scope for it to keep track of it, right? So it's for tracking purposes and also for organizational purposes, right? And you can do the same thing for IP version six a year if you wanted to, but we're gonna concentrate with IP version four. It's explained in the same way, so I'm just gonna stick with that. Next thing is address leases. For example, here is what you see a, a client IP address and it's just called new, but what this is and usually would say is how long a address is leased for that computer. So what do I mean by that? Each computer that connects to the DHCP server is going to have a certain duration of how long that IP address is leased to them. Meaning this is how long this computer can have this IP address before it's renewed, unless you create reservations. 
So to clarify here, what you're looking at here is a reservation lease. So this is a reservation lease and these will appear as so. Remember this icon, remember it says reservation, never ever delete these unless it's part of your job to delete it, unless you've been specifically told to delete a reservation, never, never, never delete these. Now what I'm talking about ones that are regularly dynamically assigned, I'm going to have to find an example and I'm going to have it come up right now so you can see an example of dynamically assigned leases. And since these are dynamic, and if you happen to come across a computer that has multiple dynamically assigned IP addresses and there is a problem connecting that computer to the network, you can delete those. Okay, but always double check with your coworkers if you don't know what you're doing. But again, make sure they're not reservations. So if they're regularly leased IP addresses, you can right click and delete them. Why? Because they're dynamically assigned and the computer will get a new IP address. So let's get into the reservations here. Uh, we can see that this computer is also added to the reservations. So what is reservations? It's kind of of reverse of static IP address. Static IP address is an address that you go to a computer and you assign it IP address on the local level, and then you have to go off of that static IP address to configure it. So this is sometimes done on the printers and this and that. But I don't want you to necessarily worry about that because nowadays reservations are mainly used for IP address tracking and assignment. So yeah, in, as the word says, as the word reservations says, you are reserving an IP address, specific IP address for a computer that's going to connect to the DHCP server. So how is this done? Well, it's done based off the MAC address of those computers or components. It doesn't have to be like a computer in the sense like a PC. You know, when people say it's a computer and then people assume that it's your desktop, your laptop type of computer, you know, or this and that. No, this can be anything. It can be tablets, it can be printers, it could be, you know, uh, cameras that run over the, the uh, network connections. Oh, any of these type of things. So we're going to concentrate on that today. So let's go ahead and do this. And the reason we're going to concentrate on this because this would be the main thing you would be doing when it comes to DHCP server itself. So let's look up some app MAC addresses. So if you don't know what the MAC address is for people who are new to computers, MAC address is a physical address, meaning there is a physical number for your computer that is, that is uh, unique in the entire world that identifies your computer for the sake of connecting. All right, so let's just do ipconfig forward slash all here. So I can show you an example of that. This is the MAC address. It's also known as a physical address. In this computer, uh, on this computer, the network adapter here where it says Intel R Pro 1000 desktop adapter, here is its MAC address. So. What we're going to do is we're going to identify any other computers, components, or anything that has a MAC and address. So we're going to tell the DHCP server to assign it a specific IP address. So in this example, if I was to add this to the DHCP server, as soon as this computer, this computer would connect and the DHCP server would see this MAC address, it says, oh yeah, so this is the computer with that MAC address. Well, okay, I'm going to assign it a specific IP address so it can have that specific IP address. We're going to reserve an IP address based off the physical address of that computer. So this is simply done by, you know, go to the reservations, right click, new reservation, and then we can name it and then we can add the IP address. So again, as I said, we're just gonna look up some random MAC addresses for random things. So what's something that would be reserved? Well, you know, let's say a printer. We're gonna just type in printer MAC address. And hopefully we get an example of a MAC address here for a printer so we can just keep going off of that. So I'm just gonna look at the images here just so we can find a MAC address. Here's a MAC address for a printer. And this is based of a printer status. Hopefully it comes up so I can see it. MAC address, we're gonna zoom in. We're going to zoom in and definitely see what this is. 
So here is what typically would be a configuration setting for a printer. So like a printer sheet that you would print out. You go to a computer and you say, print out the configuration so I can see what the MAC address here is. And it's a little bit blurry, but that's okay. We can figure out. This one here, it says 2C9EFC1E7D84. So we're going to use that. We're going to pretend like we're adding this printer as well. So we're going to go back to our DHCP manager. I'm just let me do some organization here so we can see it a little bit easier. All right. So again, we're going to right click reservations, new reservation, and we're going to call it printer. We're going to keep it simple. We're going to call it printer. And again, remember in this scope, we have a range between one and 200. So we have to make sure we pick an IP address that's not being used. We can see there are current reservation for the example one that I've entered in here. And look, it says it's it's 15. So we cannot use that one. We cannot use 100.15. We're going to have to use some other IP address. So we're going to just say dot 20, right? Just to, you know, it, it could be anything. It could be 16 or whatever it is that you want, right? So, and then here it is where we type in our MAC address. So we're going to type it in. And we're going to use an example one that we have here, which I'm going to keep it next to it. So it is 2C9EFC1E784. So we're going to type it. We're going to type it in. We're just going to type it in as it, as it is. No spaces, no dashes, none of that stuff. We're just going to straight through type it in. So it's 2C9EFC1E784. Okay. And then we're going to type in a description. We're going to say printer IP address. Okay. And I'm just going to click add. We don't have to change anything here. We're just going to, where it says supported types, just leave it at both. And we're going to click add. Okay. And now it's added here. So we can close this. So let me just go back to a uh, maximized window so we can see what happened here. And here is our printer that we've added under reservations. So if you just select reservations folder, you can see all the things that are under that are reserved. And here it is. Here is our printer and it has a reserved an IP address of 192.168.100.20. So as soon as this printer connects to our network, it's going to get that IP address. It's going to get that IP address and it's going to keep getting that IP address. So we know that DHCP stands for a dynamic host configuration protocol. And normally when computers are connected to the DHCP, DHCP server, then they would get dynamically or just randomly uh, assigned IP addresses. We don't want that. We don't want that for printers, obviously. So we're going to tell it as soon as that printer with that MAC address connects, make sure it gets this specific reserved IP address. And, you know, we can go to properties and we can see the same thing here. Again, make sure you don't use any spaces, no dashes, none of that stuff. And this is how this is done. Very simple, right? All right. So if we go to address leases, you can see that our printer also shows up. However, it's not connected. So let's do a couple of more. Let's see what else we can do. Uh, like one of the recent things I've done is uh, a camera. So I'm going to just type in, I'm going to type in IP camera Mac address. And here's an example of this. If you want to look at the physical one, and here it is, well, this is Mac ID here is blurred out, which rightfully so, right? Because otherwise you can intercept that connection potentially, right? So here is, I guess this is a D-Link IP camera and you would, you can set it up the same way. Here's the Mac ID here, but you, well, you know, it would be here, but it's blurred out, right? For the right reasons. Uh, <laughs> let me see if I can find a different one. Uh, let's see here, images, uh, here's one. Can we see this one? Okay, here it is. So here is a MAC address for this camera. We're going to use this one too. So we're going to add an IP camera. Again, we're going to right click reservations folder here, new reservation. And, um, oopsie, let me minimize this. 
I'm going to do new reservation and let me just do some zoom in action here all right so we can see better that's a good image when zoomed in how about that okay I'm just trying to orient it so we can see the MAC address. All right, here we go. So we're going to call it IP camera. I'm going to call it corridor, corridor, corridor one. Sure, why not? I'm just going to do a copy paste action here for the description. And we're going to assign it an IP address of 30. Okay, we're going to click. Uh, well, we was going to say we're not going to click add, but we haven't added the MAC address yet. So, <laughs> all right. So what, did, what is it here? 259A. Let's type it in. 2059A0F5AF23. Okay, we're going to click add. So there, are, there is our IP camera added. And so it's the same type of deal. You know, it's important to give it the description, uh, you know, good name. And make sure that you keep it in the range so let's say if i was to go in and potentially have 10 more printers i can just continue with this range that i kind of have it it's not a kind of mini range it's not necessarily a new range because the range is between 1 and 200 as we've looked at before you know it says between 1 and 200 but i've created kind of my own organizational range for this printer here so for example let's say i was to have 20 more printers or i'm sorry 10 more printers added to here i can just continue with you know 198 168.100.21 and keep it between 21 and 29 right so you know let's say i go in here and i do new reservation and i'm gonna say uh, printer uh, number two and you know we can specify where it's where it's at so we can say i don't know reception right reception as in like the front reception where you check people in type of deal and so since i've added uh, 100.20 i'm just gonna make this dot 21 so i'm creating my own organizational thing in here right so I'm going to need a MAC address to add this. Uh, let's see here. So let me find another printer IP address here so we can use. Printer IP address. Uh, printer MAC address, I apologize. Printer MAC address. Here's a hardware address for this JET printer. So we're going to use that one for in our example okay okay so this one is 003c uh, we're gonna have to do some and uh, we're gonna have to close this out and mix minimize it new reservation here we go paste so again it's gonna be 21 and here is our mac address for our second printer which is 0030 c131739 f so we're going to add that cool okay so there we go we've added a second printer to it and we're keeping it in the ip range so that way it's easier to you know look it's just a little bit more organized right so there you go this is how you would add reservations and create res reservations for computers uh, that are going to connect to your dhcp server this is how it's done it's very simple all right, that would be it for today's video. I hope you like it. I hope you find it very easy to follow. Let me know in the comments what you think. And I know it's a little bit shorter than the previous video, but that's okay. In the next video, we're going to talk about, let's see, what's next thing? DNS. So we're going to talk about part three is going to be about DNS. So we're going to touch on that as well in the future videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss that. All right, I'll see you next time. I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye.